welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you. Jean-Pierre Louis, who's the founder and CEO of Capricare, is with us for the next 30 minutes. So stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Jean-Pierre Louis, who's the founder and CEO of the fabulous organization Capricare. Definitely doing some big things for Haiti, and he's going to fill us in tonight about just all that's going on the 2016 initiatives, and for those who may not be familiar, exactly what Capricare is. So, Jean-Pierre Louis, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Lydia. You're very Pleasure welcome. To be here. It, it, you're no stranger, but definitely we're going to take it back because we get some new viewers all the time. Sure. So, let's take it back to the beginnings, just about six, almost seven years ago. Yeah. Um, how did you found Capricare, and what does Capricare even stand for? Let's start with that. Okay. So, Capricare stands for an act of courage. Uh, it was an organization that was founded in April 2009 um, because of the lack of services when it comes to health services in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And it was a great need in the community. And I had just finished spending um, about two years doing my um, master's in public health, doing research on school health program. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, I wonder if this could be a need for a school health program in Haiti. And I went to a community where I was born called Fonfred. Mm -hmm. And I met with the community leaders, school directors, and the other folks in the community. And I spoke about, you know, my experiences when I used to go to the same schools. Would there be a need for such like a program so about school help where students can get their services on site? Mm -hmm. And after doing the research interviews and focus group and so forth, Kabaki started as a school health program. Um, okay. Very modest and doing other um, prevention services in the community, basically providing like condom distribution. Those were the two main initiatives condom distribution and um, school based. Those are big initiatives. Services. Those are very major yeah. initiatives. What do you think about it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So when you think about all that, from, from where we were to where we are now, it has been a very encouraging um, development for the program. And even doing condom distribution, people look at it as something, oh, it's just something so simple, but you have to get condom sponsored. Mm -hmm. And even when you think about be because of AIDS and the AIDS factor and the HIV factors, one condom could save a life. That oh. could stop it. People laugh at that or mm -hmm. would say it's nothing, but it is something. Oh, absolutely. You know, especially when you, when you have lack of screening, um, you know, for where folks are thinking about their next meal, so having safer sex is something that sometimes people don't think about, but if they have access to a condom, they say, okay, you know what, we'll have. Mm -hmm. And that also will prevent from people just having, you know, careless babies. Absolutely. And f let everyone know, how did you get that, of course, like I said, you have to get that sponsored. So what was the first initiative? What was the brand? How did you, and this might be an idea for somebody at home who want to sure. get in on that. Sure. How do you develop that to make that become a reality? Well, um, I had a few of my um, classmates who were also doing their MPH um, in college with me. So I run some ideas by them. They collaborated with me. Initially, we had to find you know, leaders, folks who had done this work before. So I turned directly to those who I, I knew, who were mm -hmm. my professors at that time. So I went to my professors and I said, this is what I'm trying to do. And you know, how would I be able to go about doing that? Would you be supportive to me to actually make it happen? to develop the program, develop the ideas, and figure out how to make it effective and how we're going to evaluate our program and you know how we're going to recruit folks. And of course, I turn back to the community where I know folks, like my family members and folks who um, I grew up with back then when I was like a, a kid growing up in the community. I said, would you guys be willing to help out, to volunteer? Mm -hmm. um, I can help to bring resources, but I'm going to need you guys to also put your hand in this and be ready to um, you know, embark on this journey with us. So immediately, um, we started to recruit folks from the community to help us out. Absolutely. So, Jean, what would you say is the official mission statement 
for cat for care um our mission mission statement is to provide access to community to to health services that's going to entail comprehensive health services prevention education uh, mental health services as well as professional development and, and other social services as well and currently that's exactly what we are doing we are now having five core programs you know at Kappa Care. Mm -hmm. And what has been the response in Haiti of this? Have they been receptive? I know they must be thrilled that you know you have programs yeah. there yeah. but have you actually gotten any feedback from the communities out there? It, it hasn't been easy you know there has been many challenges but I would say overall it has been very encouraging. Every single year our program gets better gets bigger mm -hmm. the more development um, we, start, we started with 20 volunteers. We now have 35 volunteers. We started with 20 non stipend volunteers. We now have 35 stipended volunteers, as well as a program director. That's nice. A, a, a physician by the name of um, Steve Papillon, a young physician who's been with Capital Care for three years. After volunteering with the organization, we decided to hire him, and he's now heading a leadership team in Haiti. Um, we have, you know, five core programs running. We have a very diverse and, and very diverse and smart um, board leadership. And we also have a very strong volunteer team here in the U.S. as well. Folks who are helping us with everything from marketing to social media to fundraising to other partnership. We now have several partnerships um, within the U.S. Mm -hmm. as well as in Haiti. So it's been very in, in, encouraging. And most of all, we also provide an employment, which is big, um, in Haiti. Um, and we begin to start to hire some consultant here as well. But the biggest thing for us is, you know, we wanted to give um, folks an opportunity to get a job. And Kappa Care was, was that um, in Haiti. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, now, you mentioned there are five core programs. Yes. Elaborate on that. So, basically, we provide comprehensive service now so, um, to health. So, it's not just in school, but we also do that on site. We okay. have a youth development program where they focus on um, teaching the, the students in, um, in the schools as well as other young adolescents in the community, English and computer training, professional development training, things like time management, budget, resume writing. Um, we provide mental, basic mental health counseling and support mm -hmm. around bereavement and trauma. Um, we also have um, our core prevention program where we continue to do um, community health workers training. We still go in the schools and do health education. We go in the community and do health education. We are now embarking on, on our latest initiative, which is focal cancer prevention program. Mm -hmm. And for many folks, they don't know that Haiti has the highest reported incidence of cervical cancer in all of the world. Really? Yes, 94 cases to 100,000 in the population, which is a lot. So a lot of women who are dying in Haiti do not know what's the, what's the cause of death is, and when they do find out, you know, when they do scream, they find out they have cancer. So that's the number one killer of Haitian women in Haiti, cervical cancer. And, and we'll pick up on that in, in the next segment and really go a little deeper on that because that's a big thing here, and yeah. even with cervical cancer, women who discover it too late. It's like a silent killer for women. Yes. And so let alone in a developed nation here, we have a hard time still detecting it. Yeah. So imagine over there, they can't get access to early prevention and treatment. It makes it a bit hard. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know what? We're going to take a quick break. Sure. We'll be right back. But everyone at home, this is your chance to get all the information you can get tonight right here by tuning in and watching our interview with Cat for Care. Stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Jean-Pierre Louis, who's the founder and CEO of Capricare. If you haven't heard all about it, well, over the last few years, definitely almost six years, you said, right? Yes. It's been going on, um, definitely providing some great services to Haiti. 
So I wanted to actually talk about some more of the initiatives that you have. Sure. And before we let, took a break, we were talking about cervical cancer. Yeah. And run that point by everyone at home again, how Haiti has the highest yeah. cervical cancer rate of Haitian women. Yeah. So right now we are partnering with um, this organization, Rotary Club in Kentucky, to be able to support us and, of course, with other individuals and folks who are interested in this kind of mm -hmm. initiative. Um, that program will have um, three key components. The first one will be education and outreach to ensure that people understand, you know, how to prevent, how do you get it, what is, what is it. The second component will be dealing with screening, the actual screening. We will be using a method called um, um, treat, treat, um, treat um, uh, method um, mm -hmm. to actually screen for the um, cervical cancer to remove any particular, you know, um, symptoms that people may have early. Um, and then the third part will be the HPV vaccine. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to kind of give um, young children under the age of 12 yep. the vaccinations to be able to kind of prevent it at all. Now, what's your take on this in terms of, do you think it will make a difference? Um, these are great initiatives, but how realistic? Has anyone combated it and be like, well, this is all great, but given the realities of life over there, mm -hmm. it's really more about, I look at it as just education. If you let them know it's part of a routine you have to do, it will be done. Yeah. Well, last, like, uh, like many things in Haiti, the first thing that you have to start with is education. You know, and once folks understand the importance of this, they will get to, to have lots of buy-in. Before we even begin the program, we did the same, you know, we went in the community, speak with the leaders, speak with some of the women. We went there and did surveys with them and um, explained to them what this is and how serious it is, you know, and they were all into it. We found out that our um, uh, see and treat um, methods would be very, you know, very low cost. Um, for such a service to, to get going. Once we implement the program, maintaining it, the sustainability will not be a, the, you know, a big challenge uh, as long as we continue to have support from folks who believe in our work and we believe that we will get a lot of support by seeing the impact that our program will be making. Mm -hmm. So, yes. It, it definitely will have an impact. Um, when you went there or you had per people survey, mm -hmm. did you notice that people were not aware of the cervical cancer issue? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, in the rural area where folks have like access to education or access to health services or access to, you know, what's going on around them, um, when they learn about these things, they are always in, in you know, in, in amaze, like, wow, really? And you, then you have to explain, yeah, you know, this is what could be done and this is how it can be done. This is how we want people to kind of help out. So, yeah. That's great. So let's talk about the challenge of funding. You are an official 501c3, mm -hmm. which means that it's a charitable organization. Or organization. Yep. So please, at the end of the program, we'll give lots of information on how sure. anyone at home could help donate, be a part of the programs. Um, any assistance is yeah. great assistance. Yeah. We'll kind of elaborate on that and some of the challenges and what limitations of being a 501c3, what that kind of limits you to. Well, as a 501c3 organization, we constantly doing fundraising. Um, we're constantly doing grant writing. We're constantly making the acts to folks who believe in our mission and our work. We bring funds in by creating partnership, but we also do bring funds in by doing um, fundraisers. So every year we do at least two major fundraisers a year. Mm -hmm. And right now our next one is the it's called Show Your Love for Haiti, mm -hmm. which is on January 16, um, 2016, Saturday, of course. Um, it will be to commemorate the Haiti earthquake, but also to raise support for the mental health component of our cervical cancer prevention program. So that's one way. The other second way is uh, mid-year we celebrate our anniversary, um, the efforts that Capricorn has been doing and the great work that's been happening, and we celebrate that. And so that, those are the two main ways that we bring funds in. And you mentioned that you have a board member. So this is this is official, everyone. So you don't have to worry if you are donating, um, because a lot of people are worried oh, yeah. about scams. Oh yeah. They say I'm donating to Haiti, but does Haiti ever get the money? Yeah. Where does the money go? Yeah. So use this as an opportunity to really let everybody know okay. where the funds go if they do decide to choose Capicare as their organization.